burn your reputation as a competent club maker if this occurs on a regular basis. Light colored shafts like uh, whites and yellows may have several layers of paint so the black doesn't bleed through. Um, no better example than the uh, yellow colored UST Pro 4 shafts. It was always hard to test that these shafts because they, were, they had multiple layers of paint on them. When you sand it through, it would take, I think, like three layers of paint until you got down to the dull char charcoal color, just like the butt end of a graphite shaft. That's, that's how you know when you get to the, uh, the, the bare shaft itself. Two-tone shafts may have an extra uh, base layer of paint on the tip, so don't be surprised if it requires more time to abrade these as well. But again, don't confuse the layer of uh, layer black paint for the bare shafts. Now, do you have to get all the paint off? Well, the answer to this is really no. What you want is that the paint polyurethane is roughened to eliminate the smooth surface. It may require you to remove all the paint uh, to get the shaft in the hosel, but leave it a little on there as long as it's roughed up and the shaft enters the hosel is really all that's necessary. Okay, the, another manual procedure that has been used over the years by club makers is to abrade the tip of the steel and other metallic shafts like titanium or aluminum uh, by hand filing. File, uh, filing is considered the least effective of all the hand methods because with chrome plated steel shafts it's very difficult to fully abrade the entire shaft tip uniformly. Remember to constantly rotate the shaft in the device clamp to get an uh, even degree of rust, roughness. And with graphite shafts, there's too huge of a risk of filing a notch or a groove in the shaft that could lead to shaft fracture, uh, not to mention uh, the chance of removing too much of the shaft tip uh, as well. Therefore, we never recommend hand filing a graphite shaft. Uh, that's strictly for metallic shafts. By far the best method for achieving a professional quality shaft tip abrasion is to use a belt sander. The most popular belt sanders used by club makers today are 1 by 30 inch or 1 by 42 inch. But before you go out and purchase one, there's something you will want to know about each one. The 1 by 30 inch machines are cheap and readily available. If all you're working on is steel shafts, this will work perfectly fine. But for graphite shafts, you have to be very careful about the belts, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. For steel shafts, you want to either use 80 grit coarse um, uh, belts, which is the preferred uh, method, or you can even uh, use uh, median 120 grit sandpaper. The, the, the median grit is acceptable because of the speed of the belt. Either way, um, the club maker can abrade steel shafts tips to the proper roughness and do so faster than any other method. And to, to uh, avoid notching or cutting or potentially damaging uh, the shaft, tip abrasion should be performed on the flexible portion of the belt uh, where there's no hard metal backing, um, which is known as the platen or that little black bar behind the belt. If you look at the uh, diagram, it'll show you the, the, the area that you want to sand at. Okay, all you have to do is spin the shaft into or the opposite direction uh, the belt is moving using medium pressure. Plus, it only takes a couple seconds, too. The only thing you have to worry about is taking too much material off the super lightweight steel shafts. In those cases, uh, use just light pressure to abrade the shaft. And it'll be visible when the sh steel shaft tip is, is roughened enough, when it becomes dull, and you can see the scratch marks from the grit of the sandpaper. Okay, now let's talk about graphite shafts, which can be abraded uh, safely using a belt sander, uh, along with the use of a special graphite tip abrading belt. These belts are made of a synthetic material, such as uh, Scotch-Brite, that strips the paint polyurethane quickly and is less likely to remove too much of the graphite uh, tip. 
So be careful not to over braid. This can cause premature uh, breakage. Sandpaper belts are never, and I mean never recommended for graphite or composite tip abrasion for this very reason. Now the part I was going to talk about on the uh, 1 by 30 inch belt sander, um, when I worked for Dynacraft years ago, we sold a, a graphite tip abrasion belt that worked perfectly fine for those small little belt sanders. After several years of selling the same part, our supplier uh, decided to increase the thickness of the belt without telling us. Uh, all of a sudden, these uh, newer belts were so thick, it wouldn't turn in the machine. And they flat out told us they weren't going to change back to the thinner stock, so that was the last we ever carried of them. I guess the moral of the story is, if you decide to go with a 1 by 30 inch belt sander, make sure you can buy graphite abrasion belts that will run on it, unless you're simply going to go and hand sand the, uh, the graphite shafts. And you may also want to hold off until the webinar on uh, ferrule turning uh, later this summer uh, to make your final decision on which machine will work best in your shop. Once again, you might find it helpful if you put a mark on the shaft or run a piece of uh, masking tape around the shaft for the portion that you want to braid it. Uh, the rule of thumb is to braid the full length of the shaft that will be inserted in the hosel plus half the length of the ferrule. Okay. On to our next one here. Believe it or not, there is a very low-tech method to remove the paint polyurethane from graphite shaft, and that's with a knife blade. A few graphite shaft man manufacturers have recommended using a razor knife to strip off the paint polyurethane coating on the tips of their shafts. And if performed carefully, they will yield adequate abraded shafts. In a pinch, uh, I've even had to rely on my old trusty pocket knife that just happened to be uh, lying around. Uh, the only thing you want to do is, is you've you got to take special care not to um, have the knife blade cut down into the composite fibers, otherwise you're going to weaken the shaft. Um, or the other thing that might occur is you can scrape too far up the shaft to create kind of a cosmetic blemish. Uh, which you'll be able to see after the club head and the ferrule are installed. Uh, for those last two reasons, um, that, that's the reason I th think it's less preferred than the, uh, the hand sanding method with the strips of sandpaper. Okay. Another option is to use a, a flexible synthetic abrasive wheel, such as Scotch-Brite. These are available in various forms and under uh, commercial names, such as Sure-Brite, uh, that attach to an arbor or a motor or a fitting in a drill chuck. You start by rotating the shaft against these wheels, removing layers of paint and polyurethane on the graphite shafts. Uh, this method will not work. Um, on steel shafts. There's just not a break enough abrasion on these, uh, on these types of wheels. Uh, that's the one that's shown over on the right-hand side of the, the picture. There's also 2-inch and 3-inch wide uh, uh, mountain 